What's going on, guys? My name is Dillard Barnhart, bringing you another Spicy Meat to Ball podcast. Without further ado, and wasting much more time, let's get right into the spicy news. So I wasn't able to break down the last game. I was about to say the first game, but I mean the last game for the Seattle Mariners versus the New York Yankees. So we ended up winning the game 3-1. to one. The pitching was absolutely outstanding. We only gave up one run. It was literally two hits away from being a complete shutout and a no hitter. We only gave up two hits the entire game through nine innings, gave up one run, which was a home run that Aroldis Chapman out of all people somehow gave up to Santana in the top of the ninth inning, but it didn't matter. Even then in the eighth inning, the bottom of the eighth inning, Gio Urshela worked his magic again and ended up coming up clutch, bringing two runners home. And we didn't end up going into extra innings possibly. So that was brilliant. I love your Shelly. He just keeps continuing to work his magic. He definitely has a long-term future. Or at least I hope so. Or the front office would be completely delusional and crazy to give him up. DJ LeMayu, again, busting out the hits with another multi-hit game. He's just absolutely outstanding. I love DJ. He's definitely not a product for Coors Field. So I definitely don't want to hear that crummy statement ever again. He is just a one-of-a-kind hitter. And he's an amazing fielder too. And it's also worth to mention, Mr. Cameron Mayer has been a heck of a signing and he is very welcome on this team. I love him. He's awesome. Also, let's go ahead and talk about the Rays, the more anticipated game, which happened yesterday on May 10th. The Yankees won a very close nail biter, four to three, improving our ranker to 23 and 15. Our record is now 23 and 15, folks. We are half a game back beyond the Rays, meaning if we win tonight, if we win the game against the Rays tonight, we will be leading in the AL East, which is good news. Good news. We need to start winning too. We need to keep continuing to win. We've been winning a lot of games. I'm really proud of this team, but we need to keep continuing to win and build up a streak, a hot streak, keep continuing the momentum because the Red Sox, they're coming right behind. It's worth the mention that right now, the Red Sox have actually played two games uh, against the Seattle Mariners in Fenway after the series that we had with them, and they've dropped both games. So that means that the Mariners are now 20 and 22, which is just crazy because they started the season, what was it, 12 and 2 or 13 and 2, and now they're 20 and 22. That's just insane to me. I knew they would drop, but who could have predicted that they would have dropped this hard? They still have quality players like Edwin and Carnacion, Mr. Parrotman. You know, they have quality players that I can mention, but. I would have never expected in my wildest dreams that they would be a team that went that hot, that were that hot in the beginning of the season and were just busting home run after home run, had a long home run streak, and they just come back down to earth that sudden. And now, you know, they are 20 and 22. That's just crazy. But anyways, that's just a little backstory on the Seattle Mariners a little bit. My point is Red Sox, the Red Sox have been winning a lot of games. They're coming back out of their slump. We all knew they would because they're too good of a team to do that poorly in the season. So they're coming back. So we're going to have a lot of competition with not only the Rays, but we're going to have competition with the Red Sox. And I'm looking forward to it very much because competition is what baseball is all about. Baseball is not for the weak. Baseball is for the strong. And, you know, there's a lot of moments that would be nail-biting moments, but you just got to get through it the best that you can. But we ended up winning 4-3, to three, half a game back. Domingo Herman was incredible. I think he did his job. Uh, I mean, he did his job good enough. It was five innings pitch, gave up five hits, three runs, three earned runs, two walks, five strikeouts, gave up two home runs. But his ERA is still a 2.70. He is the most winningest pitcher now with a 7-1 and one record. And... The bullpen was outstanding. Tommy, no lights, Kane Lake is an outstanding pitcher. Struck out two batters. He just keeps continuing his dominance on the mound. He threw 10 pitches and eight of those were strikes. And he has a 1.13 ERA. He is becoming one of the most dominant relievers in the world. And I said the world. Yes, the world. He is literally such a dominant reliever. It's not even funny and it's not even close. He is in a category all by himself, and he has been a blessing just to see how dominant he's been. Adam Montevino, he gave up a hit. He had bases loaded, and he did work us out of a jam, to be fair. Yes, we did get in a jam because of a few walks and a few interesting other scenarios, but he was able to get us out of the inning with bases loaded, no outs, struck out the first batter, and then worked into a double play, which DJ LeMayu should get all the credit for as well. Not just Adam Montevino, but DJ. Oh my goodness, that double play was one of the best double plays I have seen, not just from the Yankees this year, but from any team. That was a beautiful double play, and it got us out of a crazy jam, and props to Adam Montevino 
for blocking the pitch because he actually like kind of blocked it and then it rolled directly to DJ. DJ picked it up, tagged on the second base bag and threw it to the first base bag to Luke Boy and got him out. Outstanding double play. I love DJ, not just for his bat, but his fielding skills, whether it be shortstop, whether it be third base, whether it be second base, and he, now he started playing first base. He's incredible. He can do it all, folks. I wouldn't be surprised if he could somehow be a catcher or if he could play an outfield position. I wouldn't even be surprised. I know this is crazy, but he could probably throw some pitches. I mean, if we need a, a position player to throw some pitches, I would want to see him throw some pitches because he can apparently do everything, you know? So, anyways, we also had Zach Britton. He got us out of a clean inning, too. Only gave up one hit. And struck out one batter with a total of 12 pitches and nine of those being strikes. You guys know Zach Britton is a ground ball pitcher. So he got us out of the inning pretty cleanly with no damage. And Rollis Chapman, two strikeouts with one of those strikeouts ending the game with a total of 16 pitches and 10 of those pitches being strikes. And now his ERA is a 2.45. So he had a total of nine innings pitch, gave up eight hits, three runs, three earned runs, four walks, struck out 11 batters, two home runs were given up as well. And we had a total pitch count of 145 with 92 of those pitches being called strikes. So overall, we had a fantastic day. Now it's also worth mentioning because I gotta mention this. We were losing. We were we actually had the lead in the first inning, two to zero. But then we got to the fifth inning. Tampa Bay scored three runs, so we ended up uh, losing. We were losing, and we did not have the lead. So the Rays had the lead in the fifth inning, three to two. And then Mr. Gio Urshela. And I will not understand this. I cannot understand the thought process. Maybe you guys can let me know. But with a man on second and third with Glaber Torres up to bat, they intentionally walked Glaber Torres to bring Gio Urshela. Why would you bring Gio Urshela up to the plate knowing damn well what he has been able to produce, the quality at bats, and the clutch factor that he has given the Yankees? Why would you do that? That still leaves me scratching my head. I'm not complaining because it ended up being the deciding factor and gave us the win because he ended up driving two runs home. But it's just one of those things. It's like a big head scratcher. Why would you intentionally want Glaber to bring one of the most clutch hitters in the league so far? up to that kind of position to be able to put their team ahead. That's just a no-brainer to me. I would have just pitched to Glaber Torres. Like, don't get me wrong. Glaber Torres is a legend himself. He's a great hitter too. But come on. Gio Urshela has just been clutch after clutch after clutch. And it's like, why would you put Gio Urshela out of all the players to... I just don't understand. That's just crazy to me. That's Like I said, that's just a no-brainer to me. You should have just definitely pitched to Glaber Torres. Don't even try with Gio Urshela. I mean, I'm not saying Gio Urshela is like a Mike Trout, but at this point, he's getting to a point where you don't want him to be up on the mound. Or not the mound, sorry. You don't want him to be up on home plate batting when there is a very important scenario on the line. You don't want him to be in a situation where he can clutch up because he's been proving it time and time and time after again that he is the man for those positions as well as DJ. Those are two guys you don't want in those scenarios. DJ and Gio. You need to get them out as good and as fast as possible. Don't even give them the chance. Just like you don't give Mike Trout the chance, you cannot give DJ or Gio the, sh you know, you can't give them the chance or they will make you pay for it. They will make you regret what you just did. And that's proven. And they just keep proving it every day. Both of those people are incredible. And I think to wrap up this game, it's very important to realize that we were pitching one of the best pitchers in the league. Tyler Glasnow has an absolute outstanding fastball, throws really hard. I would hate to go up against him. I'd be scared to death to go up against him, to be honest. But Tyler Glasnow... Now drops his record to 6-1, and one, and Domingo Herman has the best record in baseball for a pitcher with a 7-win and 1-loss ratio. Incredible. I love Domingo Herman. He's been proving to be the pitcher that we've need since Seve is gone, but definitely hope that Herman doesn't fall off in the second half like Seve did last year. I hope he continues his dominance, and hell, who knows? Domingo Herman maybe win a Cy Young. I don't know. You know, it's it, it could happen. Hopefully, that would be awesome if he could. I don't want to jinx it. Probably just did, but... You know, Domingo Herman in general has just been absolutely incredible in the pitcher that we've needed since Seve is out. And Seve probably won't even be back. I'm not really sure, but they're, I think they're saying that they won't be back until after the All-Star break, which really sucks. But, you know, as long as we had Domingo Herman keep producing quality after quality after quality, pitching innings over and over and over again, continues to get the strikeouts, continues 
to make sure that he reduces the damage as much as possible, then, you know, we're excellent. We're golden. But like I said earlier, Tyre Glass now, hard hitting, or not hard hitting, hard pitching pitcher, just throws a lot of hard pitchers, or hard pitches, sorry. I am getting my words mixed up, but he is just a very hard thrower. He throws a lot of fastballs. A lot of them are very hard. And it's very good to know that today we are facing Blake Snell. I think that if we can beat Glass now, we can beat Snell. And if we beat Glass now and Snell, I think that proves who's the better team. I don't know if it's just me, but if we can beat both Glass now and Snell, some of the greatest pitchers from both leagues, the American League and the National League, I think we've proven more than capable of what our hitting core is able to do, what our offense is able to do. So I am very excited, but I'm very nervous because this also dictates who is going to be first. Are the Rays going to remain at the top of the division or are the Yankees going to slide right past them? Who knows? The Rays, I believe until the end of the season, they will still be a dominant team. I do not see them falling off at all. They have dominant pitchers. They have a dominant hitting with guys like Choi and Meadows and Diaz. You know, there's a lot of guys in Kermeyer. There's a lot of guys to mention that are dominant hitters. And, you know, like I said, the Rays are not going to be a Seattle Mariners. They're not going to fall off. So them and the Red Sox will both be teams that we've got to deal with. And that's just something, you know, we're going to have to deal with. There's going to be close games. If we do end up winning this game and going up to the top there's chances big chances that we won't stay in first place forever you know it's going to teeter-totter between us the Rays and the Red Sox I know a lot of people are giving the Rays a lot of a crap for losing but I mean it's a 4-3 ball game guys come on I really don't believe that the Rays are gonna fall off just like that they've got too good of a team to fall off they're gonna make the playoffs if it's not a divisional spot, it's going to be a wild card spot. They're making the playoffs. No ifs, ands, or buts. My, pretty much my opinion on that will never change until I physically see them fall off. Because I honestly believe the Rays, at the bare minimum, are going to win a wild card spot. And whoever they play in that wild card spot, depending on who it is, but I think that if the Rays make the wild card spot, they're going to beat whoever is playing in that. So that's just how I feel about the Rays. I still have a lot of confidence in them. So I don't think we should be writing them off just yet. Especially when it's only May 11. We got a ton of baseball left, folks. You know, we got all the way till late September. So we got a lot of baseball. But other than that, there's another thing that I want to talk about. And this is the last topic I'm going to talk about before I go ahead and stop the video, render it, and then upload it and let you guys see it and get your takes on all the topics that I talked about. Anyways, so on the last game, that we played against the Mariners on May 9th, which was, like I said, the fourth game of the series, and we won the game 3-1. to one. There was a little incident between D. Gordon and J. Happ. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read this, and this is from the New York Post. And I'll go ahead and put the link in the description if you guys want to read it yourself, so you can get you know your kind of view on it. So, this is what happened. So D. Gordon questioned Hap's abilities to pitch to certain spots, led to the Yankees' starter criticizing the Mariners' second baseman's reaction after getting hit on the wrist and being forced out of Thursday night's game at Yankee Stadium. This is a quote that Mr. D. Gordon said. He said, it's the second time he threw up and by my head. So you got to get the ball down, Gordon said. If you can't throw that pitch, don't throw it. I got a family, so you need to get the ball down. That's twice. So, Hap understood Gordon was frustrated about having to leave the game, but didn't understand his reaction. So, it's very understanding that Gordon could be very frustrated with the fact that he had to come out of a game with an injury. But at the same time, Hap was like, man, I don't know why you're overreacting over something like this. Bringing your family into the mix, when in my opinion, my humble opinion, whether it's right or wrong, is up for you guys to judge. But there's really no place of you putting your family into a scenario like this when it literally has absolutely nothing to do with baseball. Especially when the fact that Hap, even when he was throwing pitches that were up and in, this pitch wasn't even close to his face. It was in his hands area. It hit him in the hands. It didn't hit him in the face. Why are you using the family reference? You are not going to die. Hap wasn't intentionally trying to kill you. So I don't understand why he would put his family in the mix. When, like I said, the pitch what hit him in the hands. It was in the hands area, not the head area. The hands in the 
the hands and the head, those are two different body parts. Those are two different things, guys. Yes, definitely the head. I would be pissed off. I would completely agree with Gordon if it would have been near his head area. Definitely his head area. I would have understood. I would have been like, okay, Happy, you, you need to settle down, man. Because anyone who pitches near someone's head, like even if it's accidental, it's like, okay, maybe you should not be having a command up that high or you should not be pitching up and in like that. But it wasn't even his head. It was his hands, ladies and gentlemen. So the family reference, I don't really understand. I think that's just a huge overreaction. I still love D. Gordon. I still have a lot of respect for him. I think he was just very frustrated. And, you know, things happen. There's a lot of things that we say and that we don't mean it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I really think he was overreacting, just like Hap believes. But going on, this is what Hap said. He said he was potentially injured, and I don't know if he will miss time or what. But it was kind of an ignorant comment. This is what Hap told the Post before the Yankees opened a three-game series against the AL East leading Rays on Friday night at Tropicana Field. He said, first of all, I, it wasn't anywhere near where he indicated it was, and I don't have a reputation for that, which is very true. Hap doesn't have a reputation of beaming pitchers or hitting them in the head or driving the pitches, commanding the pitches up that high. He doesn't have a reputation. He's not known for being that guy. You know, he's a good, solid pitcher, in my opinion. Yeah, he does give up a lot of home runs, but he's a good guy. And he's not one of those pitchers that intentionally beating people for no reason. Regardless, he's just not that type of guy. Even the command, like I said, it was near his hands area. It wasn't near his head. So like he said, he said, first of all, it wasn't anywhere near where he indicated, which is very true. It was near the hands, not the head. Completely different. So Hap was also a teammate of reliever Tom Gordon and suggested the father give the son a refresher course about the game. He said, I have played for a while. So for him to say that, Hap said, I played with his dad with the 2007-2008 Phillies. So he can be reminded how the game has been played for the last 150 years. Like most pitchers, Hap needs to work inside in order to get hitters out away. It's a pitching style that has been around forever and one that isn't going to change anytime soon. Hap said, I was disappointed he chose to use those words in that language. It's a non-issue for anybody who knows a baseball game. It's a non-issue. So basically what Hap is trying to say is he understands Gordon's frustration. He gets that Gordon can be frustrated. But the fact that Gordon not only was telling them or was quoting that he was throwing way higher than where he initially was. Like I said multiple times, he hit him in the hands and it wasn't going anywhere near his head. He's upset about that. And he's also disappointed in the words that D. Gordon used because there's two different quotes. I couldn't find the other quote, but I do remember reading it on Twitter where he used the F-bomb and he was very, very heated and triggered and pissed off. And like I said, you know, we say things D. Gordon, I still respect him. He's still a great guy. And I'm sure Hap has no hard feelings about it. But Hap is just ultimately very frustrated and called him out for it just because, like he said, Hap is not that type of guy. Hap threw it up and in, but not at his head. And that's just all there is to it. He also didn't support his language towards him as well. So Hap was hopeful a day away from being injured would help change Gordon's feelings. And he said, maybe he feels differently now that he has had time to cool off. At least I hope so. Which is a very good point. Like I said, you know, we say a lot of things that we don't initially mean. I still respect D. Gordon. He's amazing. He's awesome. You know, I know he got guilty, was proven guilty for PEDs, but still, I love him. You know, he's got a batting title. He knows what he's doing up there. He's very passionate about the game. You know, I have no hard feelings for him and I'm sure Hap doesn't either. But definitely let me know what you guys think about the situation. If you think a little differently, if you think Hap is one of those guys, if you think Hap actually intentionally, you know, whenever he was throwing up and in, it was actually closer to his head than what I'm making it out to be or what Hap's making it out to be. Just in general, let me know what you guys think. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and close this off with that closing argument. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you do subscribe. It means the world to me. Your guys' support has been awesome lately. I appreciate all the lovely comments. It means a lot to me. I'm gonna keep continuing the grind, keep continuing giving you guys the best content possible. Also like, share the video if you're feeling generous and comment below some lovely comments. I always love those, those make my day. With that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Have a blessed day guys and stay safe.